Kijkers, goeiedag en welkom bij een nieuwe aflevering van In Gesprek Met. Deze week van In Gesprek Met gaan we dat een beetje serieuzer aanpakken. En uh, waarom ik zeg serieuzer, is omdat we een beetje gaan hebben over de respect en ook de, een menswaardige behandeling voor sekswerkers die er zijn in Suriname. Elk land heeft um, zulke mensen, om het zo te zeggen, we gaan geen labels plaatsen, maar elk land heeft zulke mensen en ook Suriname. En daarvoor gaan we een gesprek hebben met de directeur en oprichter van DCF, SUCOS. En SUCOS staat voor Stichting Suriname Collection of Sex Workers. En daarvoor gaan we praten met mevrouw Denise Kaar. En ja, dit gesprek gaat meer zijn in het Engels, dus hierbij bent u dan op de hoogte. Miss Kaar, welkom to our program in gesprek met. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes. Oké, okay, um, we're gonna begin with a simple question. What is the organization SUCOS exactly? SUCOS is a sex worker-led organization. And we advocate for sex workers' rights and equal treatment in society. And also we advocate for to remove barriers from like services where sex workers is not getting access to. So overall we are fighting for equality and acceptance in society. Mm -hmm. Could you give a, a little bit of an example what you mean that um, they don't get access to some services? Well, the word sex work, it's a big taboo. So by persons just hearing the word sex work it begins as a taboo and a stigma and discrimination starts there they just hear this word sex work and they don't give you a chance as to what really is it to see what's the problem why you there or nothing they just like leave everything as it is as soon as they know that you're a sex worker mm -hmm. so you are the executive director of this organization how young is the organization exactly the organization was legally established in 2008 18. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm the founder and also the director. Mm -hmm. And what was your, your your prerogative to say like that to to set up such an organization in Suriname? Well, as a past sex worker, I face a lot of challenges on the streets. And I've seen that there's no really justice coming to the aid of sex workers. So a group of us decided that, well, something must be done. But um officially we was at another organization i rather not discuss too much about that but our main objective was to that sex workers being treated more equal we feel that we're not being treated equal in society mm -hmm. and do and do the additional sex workers that we still have in suriname know of your organization well the sex industry in suriname it's very huge <laughs> yes, so they, some of them know, but what we're doing, we're trying to reach out to the sex workers that probably are not in the town, maybe they're in the Benelan and different areas. So we're busy with outreach programs so they can be aware how they can have in contact with the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and is this um, organization meant for sustainable long term? Yes. It's a sustainable long-term organization because we persons from the platform feel that we're not being treated equal. And so we're going to advocate for our rights till we feel that we're in society as equal as anyone else. Mm -hmm. And um, to, to come back on, you said the industry is very huge. <laughs> so that means there are a lot of the workers around. Do you have numbers of how many um, sex workers there are in Suriname on the streets? No, at presently, no. I can, I can just like maybe assume, but I can give you a direct average because sex workers go, they come every day. So we haven't reached out with a data as yet, but very soon we're going to start back and have a data on the amount of sex workers. Mm -hmm. And um, a question that I think a lot of people have, what makes somebody do this kind of job? Well, as a human being, you're entitled to your choice. So persons have different reasons why they might turn a sex worker. And even if you're a sex worker, it's still your choice. So I don't think persons should be questioning that because you're a human being and you should be treated equal despite of which job you choose. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Okay. And if I heard you correctly, you said you were a former one? Yes, for like 22 years. Whoa. And um, what, what made you change just to 
say you're becoming the face of um, your your yeah your co-workers to say like that and to be a voice for them what changed well as being on the streets for so long I faced a lot of challenges and also my peers have faced a lot of challenges but I decided to take the lead because of a lot of us don't want to come out and really advocate for the right because of the stigma and discrimination mm -hmm. that they've been faced with in society. Well, of course, I'm not sh ashamed to say that I was a sex worker and I being the image, maybe I can encourage others to come forth because there's a lot of challenges going on in the sex industry where it's just like underneath, it's either the sex workers are afraid to discuss their problem because they know persons don't take them serious mm -hmm. or sometimes they're even afraid because they think that being that they have migrant sex workers, they're going to be deported. There's so much reasons why sex workers don't want to come forth. And as having a platform for sex workers, I think this is a chance where we can advocate about our challenges and possible solutions to the public. Mm -hmm. Because everybody knows we have... Um sex workers, we got prostitutes, we even got clubs. So a bunch of, um, the question that rises is, um, are you advocating for all of them? Yes. Or are you advocating, okay. Because a, a few of them think, the, the, the girls that are working in clubs, that they already have somebody that stands up for them. They're in a club, but they're still sex workers. So sukas, once you're a sex worker, you falls on the sukas because we're advocating for sex workers' rights. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna look at it because you're in a club, you're not on the sukas, then if something happens to you there, then it's like you're saying that sukas can't help the person. Mm -hmm. And that's not so. We're advocating for sex workers' rights throughout Suriname. Mm -hmm. we're, we're nearing the end of 2019. How, how do you look back to um, this last year? Well, for me and my team, I've seen that Within the sex industry, there's a lot need to be done. And uh, Sukas being the first sex worker-led organization in Suriname, our work is kind of cut out for us because there are so many challenges that need to be highlighted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, at the end of 2019, we're seeing our, well, exactly where the areas are that we have to like empower sex workers even more strong. And, and what, what, what is there ahead for 2020 for the organization? Well, ahead for 2020, it's a lot because we're going to reach out to all sex workers throughout Suriname and in trying to empower them to be leaders of their platform. Mm -hmm. Because what we're seeing is that there's a lot of sex workers out there who are capable of being leaders and advocating for themselves. But because of the stigma and the discrimination that is there within society, they don't have the confidence. So the sex worker platform is going to give these sex workers a chance now, give them empowerment programs and give them a chance now so that they can advocate for themselves. So persons can actually hear it from the person's mouth and not just persons assuming that this is what is going on in the, in the industry. And uh, a, a big question that um, comes up when people hear sex workers, is it safe? Well, if you can refer that question, because it, it kind of impact on two sides when you say, if is, it, if, is it safe? In what way you really refer okay. to? Is, is it safe for the, your peers? And if it, is it safe for the customers? Like, um, let's in, like, say, um, how am I supposed to say it? STDs and those kind of things. Well, STDs are all over, but yes, sex workers is the ideal target for STDs and infections, yes, because we're at risk, we're mostly at risk. But basically it is safe because persons always like put the blame on sex workers. Sex workers are spreading <laughs> HIV or what they're doing and these kind of things. But a story actually have two sides. You understand? It has two sides. So basically, that is one of the reasons why the platform is there to educate society that they're looking at things from just one side, mm -hmm. that the negative side. But there's also a positive side to being a sex worker. That's why I asked to rephrase the question because it's a lot of part to that question. Yeah, so 
Okay, then please um, um, elaborate for me what the positive side is of this job. Well, the positive side of this job is that person tends to see sex workers as just an image on the street standing up, sexing for money. Mm -hmm. But actually, as we would have did a collaborate with um, Miss Carla Backboard in a song stating that we're social sex workers. And in that song, it elaborates that social sex workers means that there's client not only wanting to sex, but they want to maybe have a conversation with you. They feel comfortable like relating problems to you, what they can do with their spouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not in an image like we're only there for like sex and money. There's so much other services that a sex worker can provide. So a bit of like a therapist thing type of yes, thing <laughs> of course because whether you want to hear it or not there's clients that comes with really stressful situations and they need someone to speak to they don't feel comfortable like telling other persons because maybe the social status the the relationship and these things and sex workers is there and actually by re um, the, the client related his problem it can really relieve him his stress because maybe he was going to create suicide he was going to harm himself in some way mm -hmm. so by just getting someone to talk it out it's kind of like relief him from doing that yeah that, that, that's uh, that's another side of the story yes, that's <laughs> what i said persons only see the negative side but there's actually a positive side to it I, I agree. And what about um, health insurance? Do your peers um, insure themselves for like um, health policies? Well, um, last year and part of this year, Sukas did a program where we um, get some persons their health insurance. We provide them with some health, health insurance costs. And um, hopefully in the future, we're looking to like going to more programs whereby we can help more persons from the target group because it's it's actually more difficult for migrants mm -hmm. to have access to health insurance mm -hmm. and are there a lot of migrants in in this field of work yes there's a lot there's a very much a lot okay um yeah then that makes it a bit difficult because the health insurance is for um <laughs> persons that live and are born in the country though I, I i can understand the obstacle that your peers have with this one but um you say your organization has a platform you're releasing a new song um that um educates let's say it, it's supposed to educate yes. <laughs> the great masses about what actually the job is of a social sex worker yes of course it's also um educating the society and it's also fun very good editing and it's good it's very nice so whilst you're like seeing sex workers from a different view you can also enjoy yourself <laughs> so that means it does that means it has a great beat to it yes there's a beat to it so while you're just listening to you're good you're going to it too <laughs> okay but are there are there also um Surinamese sex workers um, that are also doing this type of jobs. Yes, as I mentioned before, the industry is why there is a bit of all different cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and and um, we were having a little bit of a conversation up front, and you said um, there isn't a testing site yet, but that's also something in the future. Yes, there's not a testing site yet, but um, that's also one of our on our agenda for the future. Mm -hmm. But at presently now we're doing public outreaches, we're doing a lot of empowerment training, which is very important so that the, the, the target group of itself can be empowered to handle their challenges. So at presently now we're mostly focusing on public outreach and advocating, mm -hmm. yeah. And how and how was the the, the, the collaboration between, the, between SICAS and your peers? Well, it's very good. As I mentioned before, there's so much sex workers wants to be involved within the organization. You're seeing, you're seeing so much talented that persons didn't really know exist within sex workers. But one of the thing that is sex workers feel more comfortable among their peers. They can relate more among their peers. So having a sex worker led organization brings out a lot from the, the group. Is it, is it also um, the meaning that these trainings are supposed to help them, like say, um, if they can do something else um, besides 
their sex worker job or if they can step out of it. Is that also the meaning of it? Yes, it's part of the objective, but what we want to do, it must be a choice. They mustn't be forced out of it. Mm -hmm. It's their choice if they want to stay or they want to go. But at presently, whilst they're sex workers, we're there to advocate for their rights. They're being treated equal in society, having accesses to services where they've been marginalized for just being a sex worker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the occupation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, people might say it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> yes, that's why I always say um, we believe that sex work is work because it provides for us and it helps in so many areas whereby persons tend to think that you're just doing it for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are some of the things we would like to bring to society. Let them know exactly the life of a sex worker, what it is. And not just looking at it from one side outside, but actually bring them in to the ideal thing of how a sex worker life is. You said you, you were you were in this type of work for like 22 years. And I guess you're also um, up to speed that a lot of previous sex workers were harassed. They were beaten down. And um, how, how is it that um, sukas can prevent, of hopefully prevent these things for, from keep happening? Well, first of all, I must say, it, now that it was, it's still happening till now. Okay. There are a lot of violations sex workers facing on a daily basis. These, all these things, these violations are still happening now. But the sex worker platform, what we do is that we tend to get our clients to the relevant services and make sure that their cases are being taken serious. Mm -hmm. Because of the stigma and the discrimination, a lot of persons tend to don't take sex workers serious. Mm -hmm. The minute you say you're a sex worker, it's like you're from a different planet. So we try now to upgrade that image. Let them know that, okay, we are a sex worker, but we're also human. Yeah, exactly. But most of, most of the sex workers that were beaten down were more transgender. Is it, is it still transgender or is it also women that are still being beaten? Yet transgender face a lot, a lot of challenges being um, because of their gender identity, mm -hmm. but also the females are facing a lot too. There are a lot of violations in when you take, go out with a client, there's a lot of robberies, there's a lot of violation going on within the industry. So if I understand you correctly, the person that's supposed to provide for the service gets robbed by the customer? Often. Oh my God! Often, but that's just that, and they can go to the cops because they think the cops are just gonna say, "Okay, you're a sex worker," and most of them are afraid because they're gonna f face deportation. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of the ch uh, challenges that sex workers facing are not really persons are not really highlighted in society. Mm -hmm. But if you say they're afraid of deportation, that means they're here legally. No, it doesn't necessarily mean illegally. Mm -hmm. It means that the stigma of the word sex work, bec because the first thing persons tends to say is that sex work is not work. Mm -hmm. So the attitude begins there. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's not that they're illegal, but the stigma that goes with the word sex work. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what, what is your pronoun, um, let's say, um, advocacy? Um, announcement that you would like to make to we're going to the end of this year that you would like to make through our platform to the society well i would like the society to really get to know sex workers know what it is about as i said before don't just look at it from the outside but get to know what's inside what's making persons really like doing this job and not just thinking that we're doing it for fun because actually that's far from reality. There's a lot that makes a person do this work. And that's why we're fighting to show that it is work. Mm -hmm. So we need, we, we, I'm calling ardently on society to be more involved in programs so they can be more aware mm -hmm. of the life of a sex worker. And, and did you also step to, we, we also have a bunch of NGOs that also help um, peers like um, your, your peers. Do you also step to them for like say 
um, trainings and those kind of stuff? Yes, we're busy collaborating with a lot of NGOs because basically our goal is to be more empowered. So when there is trainings, we've been invited from other NGOs and we attend because it's always good to build your capacity more. Mm-hmm. And um, we collaborate with some services, yes, because if there is a client that comes to Sukas and we can provide them with a service, we would refer them to somewhere else where they can have the requirements. Mm-hmm. But are there are there other organizations that have that also can help sex workers? Yes, as presently now, as I mentioned before, we don't have testing and counseling. So in that area, sex workers usually goes to other organizations that has that. Mm-hmm. But the difference is is that Sukas it's a sex worker led organizations and the other organizations are organizations dealing partly with sex workers. Mm-hmm. So there is where the gaps comes in. So the, the 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 main the main um, point here is that equal rights and also the safety of the sex workers. Yes, the safety plays a big part. Well, previously we've heard of a lot of um, things that they want to do within the sex industry, which we would like to like. We don't have any problem with what they're trying to do, but we should like get into it more so that. Nothing for us without us. We just don't want no decisions making without us. Because we're best person to describe our challenges. So that's my view on that. Yes. So it was a very enlightened conversation, I should say, because a few things you already know a bit because here and there you talk with a bunch of people. So you know a bunch of things, but it's like you say, people only know one side of the story and not the whole picture. Don't People don't see the big picture. Exactly. So the only way you can get the whole picture is to get to know about the platform. Exactly. So, um, yeah, we from ATV hope that you go more to the media so that people know that there is a platform, uh, yeah, a sex workers-led platform so that people also know that they have questions and and they could come for help and other things. Yes, of course. We want to reach out to all sex workers that uh, Sukas is there for them. Despite if you're in a club or once you're a sex worker, we're there for you. Okay, Miss Carr, this was an... Uh interesting but enlightened conversation i would like to thank you for your um your comes to the studio yeah i'm a bit out of my english words <laughs> um, but i would really like to say thank you and for the upcoming upcoming holidays i would like to say a great holiday and a great yeah end of the year and a happy new year same to you and thank you again for having me and you would be seeing me more in the future because the advocating is very wide for next year we're looking forward to it. Yes, thank you. Ja, kijkers. En uh, ja, u heeft het zo al gehoord. Mevrouw Kaar geeft het aan dat um, mensen moeten niet alleen eenzijdig um, hun meningen hebben over um, social sex workers, om het zo te zeggen. Maar um, met de komst van mevrouw Kaar zijn we dan aan het einde gekomen van dit eerste deel van In Gesprek Met. We zijn we zo weer bij u terug voor het tweede deel van In Gesprek Met. Tot zo.